We love spending this time with you. Thank you for listening. If you would like to take your listening experience to the next level, did you know there's a way to do that, Jabo? I do. Yep, you know how you do it. You go to the tjshow.com, you sign up for the TJ Show newsletter, and you get cool things dropped right into your inbox like the TJ Show's 10 shares. We pick 10 different things, everyone on the team does it, that we think you're going to love. It's not just about our show. This no. is about like stuff, music we're listening to, whatever it may be. Life stuff. That's just the tip of the iceberg. There's a whole lot more in there. Sign up at the tjshow.com. This is the TJ Show. It was my daughter Willa's sixth birthday weekend. It was good to see you this weekend at the pool party, j Oh, I enjoyed it. It was nice being there. Yeah, she was so excited that you were there. And this weekend, my parents were in town, and they were hanging out with our girls. And every single time they come to town, I get a full report on all the drama that happened <laughs> while my wife Jess and I were somewhere else. Because, you know, they just hang out one-on-one with the girls. Right. And apparently there was some drama as they were all figuring out what to eat for dinner together. And we got the scoop. You guys were with Grandma and Grandpa this weekend? Yes. Okay. And I heard some drama broke out in the car. Oh, okay. So, we were driving to the mall, and uh, my grandpa said, I really want to eat at the Cheesecake Factory. My belly isn't full enough. I can still see my feet. So he was in the mood for Cheesecake Factory. And we all wanted to go to Chick-fil-A. See, there's a lot of passion here. They, they have their affection for Chick-fil-A. Oh, okay. So Grandpa wanted to go to Cheesecake Factory, and you girls wanted to go to Chick-fil-A. Yeah! They're very <laughs> seemingly on the same page with this one. They started fighting. Um, Grandma, yeah, um, let the kid eat, Tom. So <laughs> is, you know, you'll hear a translation for that in a moment. Let the kids eat whatever they want, Tom. So Grandma said, let you guys decide where to go. Yes. So where did you wind up going? Chick-fil-A. Yeah, Chick-fil-A. Oh, so you got to decide. How did that happen? Grandpa never gets his way with Grandma. Yeah. Yep. That's unbelievable to me. <laughs> Guess my mom won out and all the kids won out. That's quite the observation from a child. Well, beep, 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 beep. My time just expired here. Got to go build my Lego house. Goodbye. All right. Love you, girls. So <laughs> that's a, she had something more exciting in the other room, apparently, which I didn't know. She was building a Lego house. Next time I'm on the phone with somebody and they're taking up too much of my time, I'm going to start beeping. <laughs> and when they ask me what happened, I'm say, my time just expired here. Yeah. I need to go do something else with my life. I think she learned that from the microwave. I love it's it. great teacher, that microwave. Yes, Kenny. They should use that instead of the playoff music at the Oscars when someone's speech is going on a little too long. <laughs> little, little kid. Charlie, beep, 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 beep. Time's up. Love you. Love you too. Happy birthday, Willa. He <laughs> thinks. Oh, and Kenny, how was my party over the weekend? Oh, yeah, I forgot you weren't there. <laughs> <laughs> Now, somehow, my daughter Willa decided to slip in a little burn there. Um, nice. she, I deserve it, Willa. She, so she invited Kenny to her birthday, and Kenny didn't show up because he had other obligations. And I said, it's no big deal. But Willa just said, how was my party? Oh, yeah, I forgot you weren't there, which is a little spicy. And I, I, I don't know how I feel about that. Hope your girlfriend's party really fun. Probably mine was going to be funner. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> it was a fun time even without Kenny, right? Yeah, at least Jabel got to come. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, she was excited you were that there. That was a <laughs> consolation prize, I guess. No, she's, she loves Kenny still, and you know what? Kenny was very nice, brought in a gift. You didn't have to do that. And in his absence, uh, they will get now another gift at home. And, you know, it's funny, they all share each other's presents. So the, the, what, was, what did you get her? So I got her this game called The Floor is Lava. Right. Which I thought all the girls could enjoy. They love that. They jump from couch to wherever. That's very good. And then I didn't want the other two girls to feel left out, so I got a little bit of an arts and crafts set for all of them to take. Wow. So nice. They all got gifts. You know, the last week in June is always Lightning Safety Week. Shouldn't we always be concerned about our safety when it comes to lightning? Yes, the answer is yes. And we can't have too many reminders. We need to be safe around lightning. <laughs> we need a whole week? It's not like an entire year? <laughs> Our life? <laughs> right, it should be. <laughs> when you're born, it's lightning safety life. Life, right. <laughs> In honor of this week, let's revisit the story our friend Rob told us about the time he was struck by lightning. So, Rob, I've always wanted to meet a guy who was struck by lightning. Right. So, you don't have to meet me. We know each other pretty well. <laughs> yeah, well, when, when were you going to tell me about this? You know, it's not something that you just casually go around and say, oh, by the way, you know, I'm a lightning strike survivor. First of all, I'm glad to see you're still walking around. Yeah, me too. 
how were you struck by lightning and what happened? I was in a chapel tent, much like any event tent. It had a set of poles that went up through the top, the canopy, and quite a storm came up. And I was standing up front, I was speaking that night in the chapel, and I had a microphone in my hand. And I felt a drop of water on my shoulder. The sky lit up with a strike of lightning that I actually saw the flash. I felt it hit my head. Rethinking it afterwards, it had to come down the pole and I sort of got a side strike from the pole. Suddenly everything turned to slow motion. I felt it go down into my torso and then down through both of my legs and into the ground. Uh, my hands sprung open, so I threw, basically ended up throwing the microphone far across the tent. What did you feel after the shock left your body? What does your body feel like? I just looked around and I, the first question I asked was, are, are you okay? Is everybody okay? Because there was crack of thunder and people were screaming. And actually, TJ, a lot of people in the tent that day felt a shock. You hear sometimes when people are struck by lightning, either their life changes or there's something different about their body. Have you noticed anything or did you notice anything in the time after you got struck that was different? Well, I was training for a trail marathon at the time, and the next morning when I got up to go out and run, my shins started to sweat like crazy. Profuse perspiration. And that had never happened before? No, not through my shins. Uh, my shins and my knees still sweat like that. So supposedly a lightning strike can change your cell permeability, and I guess it uh, rerouted my sweat plumbing. That's incredible. That's not it. Anytime I would uh, go from a dry environment, like inside of my house, and I step onto some place that's wet, like a sidewalk, or especially if I step into a shallow puddle, even if I'm wearing shoes, I feel sort of a discharge of electrical current through my left leg. Not my right, just my left, and I think it's because I was mostly leaning on my left leg when it hit. Does that still happen today? Very infrequently, but yes, it does. And how long ago did that lightning strike happen? 10 years, 20 years? Uh, 15. 15 years ago? Yep. And you're seemingly doing great. <laughs> yeah, no, no real um, you know, ongoing problems. I feel quite fortunate. Interestingly enough, most people who experience a lightning strike do survive. Well, thank you for sharing that, Rob. You're very welcome. Uh, I hope you find this story striking. <laughs> we thank Rob for sharing oh, his story. What a great pun. On Lightning Safety Week, our producer Heather is trying to fix your husband or just provide him with a solution. I'm trying to make him better, TJ. Okay. Well, that's, that's admirable. Yeah. Apparently, he's taken a liking to chess, and he wants to play with you because you're his wife. Sure. And you're his best bud. He loves to spend time with me, yeah. And you're just not interested at all. No, it's chess. It, it's boring. <laughs> Let's and be real. So you took a unique uh, approach to fix this problem that he keeps trying to get you to play chess. Hey, Lewis. And uh, here you are interviewing him about it. Mm -hmm. Hey, Heather. I have a surprise for you. I think you're going to love it. Okay. You just always know that's a bad thing. Mm. So you know how like you want to play chess, but I don't really know how to play chess? I've taught you how to play chess. Okay, I really don't want to play chess. <laughs> okay. So I set up a play date with Kenny. Play date? Because Kenny loves chess. How old do you think I am? Let me fit. So I set up a play date with Kenny on the show because he likes to play chess. Mm -hmm. And I figure you like to play chess. So what? And why don't you guys, guys play together? Do you think I'm four? Well, you, okay. So first of all, you're setting up a play date mm -hmm. for your yeah. husband. I think it's a great idea. Second of all, Kenny, did she even talk to you about this first? And by the way, when, when did she tell you about this play date? Uh, this is the first I'm hearing about it, but I'm excited if we can do it. I knew it. See, I just I knew, knew Kenny oh, wait, okay. would be down. I knew Kenny would be down for this. Yes. Okay, so this is a different detail. I didn't know. You didn't yeah. tell him beforehand, Kenny? <laughs> no, I wanted to confirm with Lewis first because he's more of the, you know, he's the one who wouldn't probably want to do it. Okay, so you decided on Kenny's behalf Correct. that he'd be okay with a play date. Yeah, yeah. Heather decided on her husband's behalf and Kenny's behalf. Yeah. This is Heather's, like, experiment right now. Yes, seriously. I'm playing chess. You need friends, right? I have friends. 
Yeah, but you don't have anyone to like talk to about like your feelings and like stuff like that. So yeah, I do. I have you. No, but like besides me, like uh, if you want to complain about me, don't you want to complain to like you could be like to Kenny, like Ugh, the wife. I could just complain to you. <laughs> <laughs> I go right to the source. <laughs> okay, well I admire. I admire that, Lewis. I'd rather he didn't. But right to the source. Right. How would it go if I said no? I mean, I'd still want you to go. Oh, okay. So, what's the end result? So, you accepted my play date. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. See, he's trying to be so nice, but if I was him, I'd be so irritated by this. I don't want uh, my wife making play dates for me and not even talking to me about it and not even talking to the person who she's setting up the play date with. It'll be weird. What do you mean? You're just, like, not playing chess while we're playing chess. I'm not going to your play date. Oh, you're not going to go to my play date. I can drop you off if you need somebody to drop you off. <laughs> Have fun with your friend Kenny. You're going to drop him off? <laughs> this is how I know he needs friends. He didn't even know that I wouldn't be there. He assumed I would, but why would I go on your, you know, friend date? Did you guys catch that? When when she said that she wasn't going, he went, oh. Did you catch it? Play yeah. it. He said, oh. you off. <laughs> Have fun with your friend Kenny. Yeah, he's kind of dependent on you. He wants you to be everywhere. Right. Okay. Sure. Yeah, he sounds thrilled about this. Oh, he sounds so sad. Yes, producer Kenny. I'm really excited, but I do have to ask my girlfriend permission first. (laughs) That's that's fair, I guess. Okay, you know what I'm hearing here? And I might be wrong about this, but I do feel like maybe there's something underlying here amidst all the laughing and the jokes. My feeling is you really want your husband to have actual friends, and you're noticing he doesn't really have a lot of friends that he's hanging out with. That is correct. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. I feel like Kenny would be a great friend for him. Okay. So, you know what? I actually want to get into this in a few moments because this is a, an issue that I hear come up so often amongst a lot of friends that we have where wives will claim, hey, my husband doesn't have any friends. And I have some insight to share on this. So, Because I was in the same space at one point and I got out of it and I'm very glad I did. So we'll get to that and a whole lot more in a few moments. The TJ Show is sponsored by Prize Picks. You want to play daily fantasy sports and it just seems so complicated? Well, what about Prize Picks for daily fantasy sports? Prize Picks is cool because it's just you picking against stat projections, more or less on two to six player stats, everything from basketball finals, keep an eye out for star players, for boosted payouts, and you can even use esports to add to your entries now. Yeah, every Wednesday and Saturday in June, if your esport lineup doesn't win, you'll get your entry fee back. Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of players and stat types are what makes Prize Picks the number one fantasy sports app. PrizePicks.com. Download the app today and use code TJ Show for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. That's code TJ Show on Prize Picks for a deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Must be present in certain states. Visit PrizePicks.com for restrictions and details. PrizePicks.com. Have I said it enough? PrizePicks.com. Ah, you got me. This edition of the TJ Show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Yeah, the year is going by quite quickly. Bro, I blinked and it's gone. Halfway there. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's hard to take inventory on how we're doing. And I think one of the ways to truly assess our progress is by talking to someone else about it. Therapists have made me realize, oh, actually, maybe I'm further along than I think. Because our mind can play tricks on us. That's right. And we've got to talk through this kind of a thing. Whether you're celebrating big wins, small wins, whatever it is, knowing that you're winning or if you're not, how to change that is so valuable. A win is a win and therapy is a win. I agree with you. If you've ever considered it, go to betterhelp.com slash TJ. That's betterhelp.com slash TJ. You fill out the questionnaire, you get linked up with a licensed therapist. If for some reason it's not a fit, you can switch therapists anytime. No additional fee. Take a moment. Visit betterhelp.com slash TJ today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash TJ. Betterhelp.com slash TJ. This is the TJ show a few moments ago. We heard our producer, Heather, sharing that she set up a play date on her husband's behalf. (laughs) He's taken a liking to chess. She knows Kenny likes chess, too. And so didn't talk to anyone about it, not even Kenny, and just set up the date. And uh, you could hear her husband's reaction. If you missed it, it'll be on our podcast later today after the show. But I think there is an underlying issue here. And you said this is indeed the case. You're concerned... That he doesn't have any real guy friends. Would he say that is the case? He wouldn't say that, but it's absolutely accurate. Why do you say that? Because I've never met one of his friends. Okay, well, I've that's never definitely met a friend. That's telling Jabo. Right? 
and producer Heather and her husband have, have been together for what, almost 12 years? Uh, about 11, yeah. So who does he think his friends are? Well, he claims this one guy, Nate, is his friend, which does exist. I, I've never met him, but I <laughs> do believe he exists. He'll play basketball with him like once a year. Right. That's not a friend. But I, in all seriousness, I think you're genuinely concerned that he only leans on you. Correct. And why does that concern you? Well, there are a couple of reasons. One, I would like him to, you know, maybe leave the apartment every once in a while so I can have some alone time. That's one. (laughs) Two, I do think it's important for him to have another bro to, like, talk to. Like, you can't always just, you know, talk to me about things. There are things that I can't relate to because I am a female, if you were. You know what I mean? So it'd be nice to have another dude to talk to. No, and I I think what you're saying is so common Mm -hmm. or way more common than we realize because, you know, like, I definitely have friends that I would consider friends from high school and they're great guys and I love them. But when it comes to talking deeply Mm -hmm. and like really sharing your heart with someone, that's a fairly new thing for me. Like I would say I met my wife, Jess, and I started sharing deeply, but it's a different kind of relationship that I have with her than maybe I would with one of my now guy friends. Right. And the first person who really changed that for me, where I really started opening up and sharing my heart with another guy is my friend Edgar, who we've heard from. Edgar also works in radio, and I met him through radio, but he really became a brother to me. Like, truly, we share everything with one another, and we can share each other's hearts, and we know that there's this trust factor there. And without question, it has changed my life for the better. And then that allowed me to open up my heart to other men, and now I have more guy friends who I can just flat out talk honestly and deeply with. And it's allowed me to go to, like, my high school friends now who I've always been in touch with and, and actually start sharing a little bit deeper and not be so afraid of trusting someone. Someone. There's been a study that came out and they were wondering why do women tend to live longer than men? And one of the things they came out with was that when women have something going on, they will go to another woman and say, hey, this is what's going on. Let's talk it through. And that helps some kind of figure out the problems. But when men usually have something going on, they'll isolate. They'll yeah. go ha- hang out in their room or in the man cave and they won't share what's going on. And so that stress ends up eating away at them. Absolutely. And eventually they pass earlier than most women do. Yeah. And I, I completely agree. That's got to be a huge part of it. Because, yeah. And if I'm just being totally honest, I think the reason why I would avoid that and trying to find other guys to talk to, it's all pride. It's all, I want to figure everything out on my own. Yeah. I want to be the solution to all my problems. I don't want to ask for help. And once that stuff starts going away, you realize it, there's no other way you'd want to be. You'd, you want to be in community with other guys talking honestly about our lives. It really changes the game. And anyone who's been there or is currently there knows they would never want to go back to isolation. But I think it's so easy, especially with the way the culture is, to isolate yeah. and make us feel bad for opening up our hearts. So thank you for bringing that up on your husband's behalf. You're welcome. And, uh, you know, I'll be a friend to him if he wants. All right. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll, <laughs> throw, I'll throw your name into the ring. We could start there. Yes, yeah. Kenny. Tell Lewis we don't have to discuss feelings while we're playing chess. Well, I would prefer if you did, all right? (laughs) Oh, I am still on a high from the weekend, and I'm not talking about, like, drugs or alcohol involved kind of high. Just a life high. Yeah, I don't expect those other kind of highs from you. Oh, I got to clarify, you know. It's very easy to get a hold of the other stuff. Yeah, if people don't know you, yeah, okay, I get it. So, I took my wife out on a date on Saturday night, and I'm sharing this because what I experienced just totally blew me away and this is right at our fingertips in pretty much any community that we live in and I want to encourage you to try to seek this out in your community and maybe it's with this particular artist that we happen to see over the weekend. I mentioned that I was very excited to go see an artist that I love. His name is Lee Fields. The guy is 73 years old and he was in this tiny venue with about 200 people there standing up and watching him perform. It was one of the best shows I've ever seen in my life. Aside from the music being great and the band being great, this guy is still performing at 73, and he looks like he's like 18. Like, that's how much energy he has up there. It's pretty unbelievable. He's dancing around, he's jumping around. And what I so admired about this guy's performance, he's a classic soul singer, and you can look up his work, and he just sounds amazing. He's got such a distinct, unique voice. But what I loved about watching him is that he is so clearly a master of his craft. 
He has spent years and years and years layering what he does. Like it's one thing to pick up a microphone and start singing, Mm -hmm. but the detail involved with his show and the way that he would tell stories that would lead into the music, it was one of the most beautiful experiences in art and performance that I've ever seen. I really enjoy when an artist can segue from one song to the next with a story. Yeah. Because to me, it just feels like it, it all connects together and makes this like picture, this painting. Yes, exactly. And I was smiling ear to ear the entire show. I almost cried a little bit because it was so good. Oh, and you know, whether you're a fan of that type of music or not, which I don't know how you couldn't be, I feel like anyone, no matter what age you are, this is like a timeless sound that is beautiful. Can you real quick spell his name for me? Because yeah, I tried looking him up and I couldn't find him. So his website is Mr. L E E. F-I-E-L-D-S dot com, Mr. Lee Fields. And it's funny, he was telling a story that uh, he just put out a new album. He's still putting out new music. And he said, uh, you know, I'm surprised that this song called Forever is now the first track. That wasn't always the plan. But one day I got a call and uh, the song wound up in a Super Bowl commercial. And so he was surprised to find out that it was picked up. And so it kind of became the star of the the album. And uh, he told so many great stories that night. But you can do this, whether it's him, which I know he's still performing. As a matter of fact, I think he's going to be in Portland, Oregon pretty soon. I know we have a bunch of listeners in that area. Um, You can look him up. But also, there are so many artists that are so great that are showing up at these local theaters in our communities. And that does a couple things. First of all, supporting local art is so important, especially in this time where AI is seemingly taking over the world and people are artificially generating music. I mean, there is just so much life in this performance. I hope I get to see him again. Like, I just want to, I want this guy to just have like a residency. I'll just go see him every oh night. Oh my goodness, you'll be broke. <laughs> you'll be know. rich, you'll be broke. But you know what's funny about that, j It costs $30 a ticket. $30. I mean, think about how expensive some of these shows are. Yeah. So I bring this up to say, you know, let's say you want to go see a certain artist and it's costing $200 a ticket, not to name any names. Go look at your local theater and there's going to be someone there who is so good and is such a master of their craft that's going to inspire you. And I think that this relates to any kind of work we're doing, whether we're in the arts or not. We can always be taking it to the next level and there is a way to do that and it's fulfilling and it's exciting. So a uh, thank you to Mr. Lee Fields for making my Saturday night extra special. Now, on Friday at this time, we were talking about how my puppy, it was discovered that she gets hangry. You mm-hmm. heard that. I mean, I actually have this. I recorded it as she's waiting for her food, totally losing her cool factor. I mean, she sounds really desperate for food. And she's been regularly fed. It's not like, I mean, how hungry can she be? But then again, she's a wolf. This is what she sounds like. I mean, you think she's being tortured. Feed me, please. And Feed she's me. just waiting for food. It's like, can you wait 10 more seconds, Frankie? I haven't Frankie? eaten in three hours. Feed me. Well, we heard from your husband, Archie, Jabo, mm-hmm. and uh, he had a story. One time that sticks out to me is like, back when we were dating, uh, we were in a car together, and I remember you, because you were going through your fitness journey, telling me that I needed to eat. I remember. So you told him he needed to eat. Yeah, I figured if I wasn't, somebody had to eat. (laughs) I remember replying to you that I wasn't hungry. And your trainer at the time kind of had you at like a crazy calorie deficit. So I believe you were hangry at the time. But your response to me when I told you I wasn't hungry was not palatable. You were ready to like throw me out the car or something like that. No, he's very nice at not giving the details. (laughs) Uh, What what, would you do? I was at a caloric deficit. I was starving. (laughs) And I told him like you. You haven't like you haven't consumed the right amount of protein today yet and he's like I- i'm not hungry i'm like you need to eat more protein you're not eating enough meals how are you going to build up your muscles it was it was a, it was a whole thing it was not healthy at no, all were you talking to yourself but to him <laughs> no i was talking to him i wanted him to eat because i wasn't able to at the right. time yes you just wanted to watch someone enjoy their life yes, yes. producer heather when Jay was hangry, she turns into Joe Rogan. <laughs> Eat your protein! Eat your protein! I do! Hey, well, he's looking good, right? Yeah. So we had a little tiff, a uh, quarrel. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that was it was some irrational points being made there. Okay, hey, so we've all been there. Yeah, when I get hangry, I just don't, I can't think straight. I am not, um, you can't really negotiate with me. Yeah. Well, and it's also, bad. Jaybo, I've found that over the years, as I've been married to my wife, Jess, when I get really frustrated, oftentimes it's just a simple solution. I need to eat something. And yeah. then when I do that, it's like I'm diffused. It's the way to disarm the bomb. Yeah, we become very irrational for sure. Um, we got a couple of voice messages over the weekend. Nice job, PJ. Uh, keep up the good work. 
Yeah. Now, no name, no where you're from, but encouraging. I appreciate it. Thank you, mystery person. By the way, if you leave a message for us, for, for some reason we're not in the studio when you call, let us know your name, where you're from, and uh, feel free to say whatever you want. Hey, guys. Listen to the, am I a jerk or not? Oh, yeah. You know, last week, uh, producer Heather was reading us questions. There's a Reddit about, am I a jerk? And there was this example where these two roommates were living together, and all of a sudden, one of the roommates' boyfriends was just moving in for mm-hmm. a period of like six weeks. And it got really awkward because the other roommate asked for rent from the boyfriend. Yep. And here is this guy's take on that. Thing with the roommate, honestly, the jerk is the boyfriend. He should have offered long before the roommates even had to discuss it. It's a great point that yeah, we didn't make. I agree with that. If you're coming into someone's space, don't you say, hey, is there anything I can do? Right. Yes, that's what a, a real man would have done, I think. Ooh. Just my opinion. Later. <laughs> I love when people that's go, right. is this what I'm saying? Yeah. My, my <laughs> opinion don't. from real man. <laughs> yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah, thank you, real man. Again, no name and where you're from. We, we got to, you know, my grandpa's very good at saying, hi, this is Pop. And yeah. so I know who he it is. He announces himself, yeah. And then he leaves the message and at the end he even goes, Again, this is Pop. <laughs> Just in case you get the first time. Yeah, he's 94. He knows how to leave a message. Yeah, my dad does that with text messages, even though I know it's, it's him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That's right, people who sign their text. Hey, just in case we don't know. You can call us anytime at 302-303-1151. What's good, everybody? It's Gerard Hector, the host and executive producer of the True Hoop Podcast. You guys can catch me and the godfather of basketball player development, Coach David Thorpe, every Monday and Thursday talking all things NBA. It starts with Shea. Jalen Williams and terrific. It's and a great coach. It starts with Shea. He so he's carrying a team, carrying a team. He's Michael Jordan yes. right now. Search for the True Hoop Podcast on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Rate, review, subscribe. Catch us every Monday and Thursday. Take care. This is the TJ Show. Our news it sounds different around here. Kenny reads through every story he can find, and then he brings us the most interesting ones. Kenny, what's happening on the planet today? A Florida family is suing NASA regarding an incident that happened at their home in Naples back in March. A metallic piece of space debris belonging to NASA fell to Earth and tore a hole through their roof. That is tough to Imagine deal with. Imagine you just sitting there watching TV and all of a sudden something comes through your roof. That's yeah. scary. It's surprising to me that that doesn't happen more often, right? Yeah, this is a very rare situation where man-made material from orbit made its way to the planet's surface, landing intact and in a populated area. So now there are a bunch of questions, especially with this lawsuit. Who's responsible for space debris when it falls to Earth and causes damage? Yeah, I mean, is it only NASA? No, there are other people that are throwing things up into outer space, right? Well, this is NASA's stuff. So they did mention that they released a 5,800-pound cargo pallet full of nickel hydride batteries, and it was expected to orbit the Earth for two to four years before burning up in the atmosphere. Mm. The agency believes the material that landed on the home was a 1.6-pound metal alloy stanchion for NASA flight support equipment. From the way I understand it, when I'm driving my vehicle, if I was to hit someone's property or a light post or a building, I'm responsible for that, right? My insurance is. So wouldn't NASA be responsible for this hole in someone's roof? You would think no matter what, like if this is so rare, they would just take care of it, right? Yeah. Even like to just avoid the headache. Well, because for the it's repairs. so rare, there isn't a precedent. So that's what's believed now that this lawsuit, the family's attorney, does believe that NASA is liable for damages not only to the home, but also the stress that they went through involving this whole situation. Their 19-year-old son was in the house at the time. Uh, thankfully, he wasn't injured or anything yeah. like that. But law er- experts say because this is such a rare thing, it's not clear if NASA is responsible for damages in a situation like this. Well, there's so. a do the right thing mentality, and hopefully they take care of him. Right, well, I mean, I, that seems pretty obvious to me. I was driving in the car the other day, and I heard the loudest bang. Hmm. And there were no trees above me or anything. Something hit the top of my car. I still don't know what it was or how it happened. But it really freaked me out. And there was That's no scary. dent or anything. It was really weird. Yeah. Kenny, what else do you have? Well, speaking of NASA, we're learning about the two astronauts that flew on the Boeing Starliner test mission to the International Space Station. That mission itself was delayed over and over again. It finally successfully took off and docked with the space station. But those astronauts, Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams, appear to be stuck at the International Space Station. And their return flight is 
it has, it's been delayed indefinitely, according Why? to reports. Well, there's some problems with the vehicle's helium system, and uh, there's been failure with some of its thrusters. So they want to address all of these issues before bringing these astronauts home or maybe come up with a different plan. They delayed their return flight several times, but now the word on the street is that it's indefinitely delayed. So there's no telling when these astronauts oh will goodness. return home. And one thing to note, NASA and Boeing reportedly knew that this rocket had a helium leak before takeoff, but they said the issue was too small to pose a safety threat. However, more leaks developed while the shuttle was in orbit, and then there were issues with the thrusters, so indeed they are delayed from returning home. Mm. If someone has a little less air in their tire and their car... I won't get in their car. You know, I mean, this is like something that they should probably take seriously, but I don't know all the ins and the outs of what's going on. I'm sure Boeing's thrilled to have their name attached to another story now. Yes. Like this. Bizarre. Kenny, what else do we have? An eight-year-old Pekingese named Wild Thing is the winner of this year's World's Ugliest Dog Contest. Oh, is he happy about that? <laughs> hey, listen, he wanted something. I mean, he did. He's, it's pretty cool to win. <laughs> we reached out to him for comment, and uh, we didn't get much uh, <laughs> as far as the response was concerned. But this is a contest that's held at the Sonoma Marin Fair in Northern California. It's been happening since the 70s. And this dog, Wild Thing, has competed five times before it placed in second place three times, but it's its first time winning. The owner of Wild Thing will receive a $5,000 prize. Mm. I bet if I entered my little Frankie, she would get to last place. She would. She precious. <laughs> my puppy, she would be in last place. In the... Okay, go ahead. Wild Thing has extremely long hair and a tongue that's always sticking out. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. According to its owner, it's never had a haircut. Um, I, I met a dog one time who had a tongue that just hung out of its mouth. Yeah, that's this dog. It was someone I knew, and she would bring it around with her everywhere. And I, the first time I met her, I said, I think your dog is thirsty. <laughs> and she's like, no, that's just how the tongue dangles. I was like, yeah. oh, really? My cousin Barney is like that. I'm like, bro, put your tongue back in your mouth. Just go really? ahead. Just, uh, back <laughs> in. Uh, okay. I help him push it back in every once in a while. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> Kenny, what else do you have? It's officially summertime, so a dermatologist told the Huffington Post the best ways to use sunscreen. So do you want to know if you're using sunscreen properly, CJ? Currently, I'm using it on my skin. Is there another <laughs> approach that we should be thinking about? You're should, on the right track. I should probably start using it. But yeah, yeah, I think we all should. Yeah. Yes. So how do you put on your sunscreen? Do you start... At your feet and work your way up to the top of your head? or oh, Part of the reason why I don't go outside is because I hate this whole process. Okay. But if I have to go outside, what I'll do is I'll, I, first of all, I like the spritz one where okay, you spray. spray yep. So I just basically make sure every square inch of my body is covered. And I do my face with my hands first so that, that that's taken care of and my hands aren't dirty. And then I just rub it all in. Okay, you're on the right track. Who puts it on their feet? You put it on your feet? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I had a feet burn one time, j right. When I was a little kid, I thought, eh, who needs it? No, I need it. So the dermatologist recommends starting at the face so you're doing the right thing because right. you don't want to take bacteria or oils from the body and then wind up rubbing that on your face. So start from the top down. You know what's according amazing? According to this dermatologist. Jabo, I figured that out on my own. That's you, pretty, when you got burned, huh? Yeah, Experience well, will teach you a lot of things. Well, but also pretty uh, impressive. Like I knew to do my face first because it would get dirty otherwise. Also, you should use a sunscreen that's meant for your face on your face. A lot of these other sunscreens meant for the body are thicker and you might have a better chance of breaking out yeah, that's if true. you use that stuff on your face. Um, they also say, let the sunscreen sit on your skin for at least 10 minutes mm. before you go outside. And depending on what kind of sunscreen you're using, you may want to consider putting it on before or after your makeup. So if you're using a chemical sunscreen, you want to put that on first and then apply your makeup. If you're using a mineral sunscreen, you want that to be the closest layer to the sun. This feels so. a little bit like the seatbelt announcement on mm. the airplane. Like I hear what Kenny's saying, but it's just a lot. I'm doing something else while right. you're talking. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I don't, for me personally, I burn up like crazy. So I saw these tips and I thought they'd be interesting important to share. Oh, yes, yeah, producer Heather. I am no dermatologist, but I also suggest putting it on your head or like on your scalp if you have spots in your head where you oh, think your yeah. scalp is exposed. Do that too because I've been burned literally and figuratively. But Oof. Yeah, you know, this is so important. I mean, I, I don't handle this flippantly. I, I always put sunscreen on and it's been a, a huge help for me because I get burned very easily. So it's important. Me too. 
Kenny, what else do you have? Inside Out 2 is on a roll at the box office. Good. It brought in $154 million at the North American box offices in its opening weekend, and it's on track to break $100 million again here in its second weekend. Excellent. We need successful movies. Yeah. I still want to go see that movie. I keep saying I am going to go see it, but I need to. I want to. Well, we need to have a little debriefing after you see it, because I think you're going to like it. I know. You've seen it. Kenny's seen it. Producer Heather saw it. Yep. I'm missing out. Kenny, what else do you have? Well, only six films in history have ever made $100 million in their second weekend. Inside really? Out 2 is now one of those. It's up to, I believe, $720-something million globally, and it looks like it's on track to break the billion-dollar mark. Great. That's awesome. That opens the door for more Pixar movies, and we all know we're big fans of that. They oh, yeah. care about excellence, and I think what makes them work so well is it's not just a cartoon for kids. Yeah. Like, I enjoyed it just as much as my kids did, and maybe it was for different reasons, but we all had a great time, and that was the key. And it's also very air-conditioned. Oh, it's in lovely. The movie theater. <laughs> no, no sunscreen necessary at the movie theater. Kenny, what else do we have? The travel website Expedia just released its 24th annual vacation deprivation report. Mm, what's this all about? Well, vacation deprivation refers to the feeling that you don't get enough time off during the year. So according to this report, Americans take fewer vacation days than any other country in the world. And 53% of Americans don't plan on using all their time off, which is a high. I wonder if it has anything to do with people being so afraid of losing their jobs. Like they are wanting to out hustle everyone. So they're doing everything they can to be in the office more. What do you think it is, Jabo? Well, some companies don't even offer vacation time to their employees. So we can start there. That's true. And then that what you're stating could be a possibility as well. Yeah, it is tough to walk away for a period of time because, you know, I guess the fear is, well, what if someone else does my job better or whatever? Right. I used to worry about that stuff and I would take as little time off as, as possible. Now I go the opposite way. I know that as a human being, we need time to recharge. It's a bad strategy right. to not recharge. And if there's a company that doesn't give that kind of time, well, hopefully at some point you can work towards getting to a place where they do give you that kind of time. Sure. So I think it's imperative to making sure the work stays great. Mm -hmm. Yes, producer Heather. And I'm pretty sure in other countries too, like the law of the country is that you have to have a certain amount of time off at any job you work for. So mm -hmm. if that was built into maybe our system, we might be more inclined to take those days off. Yeah. Would, would you take the days, Heather? Oh yeah, I'm taking them now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, according to statistics, the average American gets 12 vacation days a year. But as j -Bo mentioned, that's not the case for everybody. And as far as the reason why they're not planning to take all of their vacation time, the top reason was life is too busy to plan or go on vacation. Mm, it is true. That's Kenny. true. Sometimes it sneaks up on you. You get to the end of the year and you're like, oh, how do you use my time? Camera guy Josh used to be in the school system. Didn't one of your teachers retire early? And it was, had something to do with vacation days? Yeah, actually, in some school districts, you can save up your sick days and your personal leave. And if you accumulate over a year's worth of time, then you can retire years early. Wow. Yeah. Well, that sounds like a good plan. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is a good plan. Kenny, nice. what else do you have? The Summer Olympics will be in Paris, France next month. It was previously announced that this was supposed to be the most sustainable games ever. The Olympic Federation and the city of Paris plan to cut carbon emissions in half. And part of the way they plan to do this was to install eco-friendly cooling pipes in the athlete's village, where the athletes spend their time when they're not competing. Meaning like in place of air conditioning? That's what would be what was used to cool down these living quarters. Oh, does it work? Well, the United States doesn't think so, and same with the handful of other countries. They announced that they will be supplying athletes with their own air conditioners for their living quarters while in Paris. Oh, no. Wow. So now they have to truck over or fly over a bunch of air conditioning units? Yeah, in a statement, the U.S. Olympic Committee said that while the U.S. appreciates the efforts aimed at sustainability, the Federation would be supplying these AC units for their athletes and went on to say, as you can imagine, this is a period of time in which consistency and predictability is crucial for Team USA's performance. In conversations with the athletes, this was a very high priority and something that the athletes felt was critical for their performance capability. Yeah, I had a broken air conditioner this past weekend. And let me tell you, you move slower oh my when gosh. it's hot. So miserable. <laughs> you know? So miserable. We got that AC fixed. Boom, we're ready to roll. Hey, yeah. give me another cup of coffee. I'm ready to rock and roll. J-Bo, hey, how you doing? What do you want to do? You want to hang out? Come Too on over. Much. It's cool. Yeah. Kenny, thanks for keeping us somewhat informed. That's what's happening. 